Hey YouTube, this is Apostle Stacy Woods. You're watching Dimensions of Stacy, and I want to thank you for doing that. I'm here um, now. I didn't want to change scenery because um, I'm working in this room right now, but I uh, got everything set up. But I'm here to talk about a topic that was asked. So this is going to, into the Acts the Apostle uh, section of the playlist. If you guys ever want to see what other questions that I've answered in the Acts the Apostle section, you can always go to the Acts the Apostle uh, playlist, Acts the Apostle playlist, and just kind of review through those videos that I have done answering questions from you, the viewer. If you have any questions that pertain to life, godliness, uh, things, uh, spiritual growth, if you want to know what kind of makeup I use, <laughs> just anything, uh, you know, loosely, uh, just ask me a question. I may not answer all of them. Some of you guys, you know, I've had to say, well, that's one for your pastor, or uh, I don't think I should do that one just yet. But however, uh, most of you guys' video suggestions, you know, I come right on and answer those uh, questions. Don't I? Don't I? Don't I? Write me a comment. Comment below if I've answered your video question and just by the help of the Holy Spirit helped you along your way because that's what I want to do, okay? But anyway, this video comes from a woman of God that I uh, love and admire dearly. Had an opportunity to meet her. Um, she's a co laborer in the gospel with me, a powerful prophet of God, a powerful pastor. And she asked me a question that is very relevant to those of us who are in ministry. So not only is this going into the Acts of Apostle section of the playlist, but it's also going into the All About Ministry section to empower those of you guys who are in ministry and you just have questions. Uh, questions that they necessarily don't answer in the seminary or don't answer in your Bible college, but yet and still questions that pertain to life and ministry. So anyway, the woman of God, I'm not going to read her email, but I just want to kind of loosely tell you guys what the email is about because the email contains some personal information that I don't want to share on the video. don't want to divulge all the details, but I just want to talk briefly about uh, the question that she asked, and I just thought it was an awesome video topic to come on and share with you all as well. And her question was, um, how to have balance um, in ministry? As leaders, as much as we would like to um, be touchable, we want to be touchable, we want to be down to earth, we want to be humble, we want to appear before the people of God in a manner that will never exalt ourselves, that will never lift up ourselves in pride. We want to uh, follow the example of Jesus. He was humble. He was approachable. He was someone you could ask a question to. Uh, and if you had a pure heart, he would answer your question. Um, he would uh, sit down and teach the people through parables. Those are uh, earthly stories with heavenly meanings, uh, things that were applicable to their everyday walk of life so that they could understand the mysteries of the kingdom just through doing simple things like fishing or by planting. And he would use fishing to let them know, I'm going to make you fishers of men. Or he would use planting a seed to let them know that this is uh, how the word of God is planted in our hearts. You know, he, Jesus was the type of person that would sit down and just talk to the people, not with all kind of, you know, stuff that would be above them. Now, believe me, me believe you me, I believe Jesus uh, said some heavy stuff because, you know, we still trying to figure out and trying to understand the mysteries uh, of the word of the Lord that are in the word of God, but yet, yet and still Jesus broke those things down to us so that we could understand them in our everyday walk of life. And so the question that was asked of me was, how as a minister uh, do you remain that, that way? Do you keep that and at the same time, maintain a level of respect. <laughs> and uh, I'll tell you, I'll just be real with you. Just be real with you. It is a very difficult, difficult balance. In fact, I would like to call it a juggling act. If I had two things to juggle with, I would sit here and just juggle while I'm doing this video. Because it is a juggling act. I'm still praying and uh asking the Lord to help me with this in my everyday walk of life. Because if you wear several hats like I do, mother, sister, friend, confidant, pastor, prophet, um, wife, um, you know, all of the hats, the roles that we play. And then if you are, uh, do, do have a, a secular vocation outside of ministry, you're that as well, administrator, secretary, manager, supervisor, you know. So all these things, how do you 
maintain who you are, your identity in God, and still uh, be relatable to the people. I'm going to tell you, I just, I just have to tell you, I have walked through um, so many trying situations as it relates to balance. Because some people watch the videos that I do on YouTube. And they see me as, you know, people, because your perception is everything. How people perceive you to be. Um, unfortunately, other things can alter people's perception of you. If people have a negative image of the church, they've been hurt in the church, they've experienced things in the church, and then here you go and you say you're a preacher, well, automatically they're going to have a problem with you. Uh, why she got to say apostle, Stacy? Do she think she's just better than everybody? I mean, you know, as if having a title just automatically makes you arrogant. Why? Because no doubt they met someone who carried arrogance with them as a result of their title and didn't really prob probably didn't have any fruit to back up or a lifestyle to back up the title that they put you know on their names and so no doubt when they see someone with a title they just have an automatic turn off point I just don't think that we should have a title you know Jesus wants us to do you know and I've heard all of the reasons why you shouldn't use a title but I, I did a video about that too. To title or not to title. I think that's the question. And I gave an example, you know, using two cans. One was a can of dog food. One was a can of corn. <laughs> okay. And I said, without a label, how would you know which was which? Um, unless you just open the contents. So anyway, that's a whole other video. We're not going to get into that. But I'm just saying, because of pe many times because of what people have gone through. Before they even come into our ministries, before they even step into our churches, people have gone through some tumultuous, rocky situations. Maybe they've been hurt by the church. Maybe they've been abused by leadership. And even those who haven't, maybe they just have a natural tendency to be skeptical. Just let's face it, we do live in an, oh, I like to speak life. So we live in a blessed world. But you guys know. Many times, um, people have gone through a lot before they come to Christ. And their image of leadership or their image of authority is a negative one. They don't think that having a godly authority over your life is something positive. They see it as someone trying to boss them around or trying to control them. Well, I'm grown and I don't need a man or woman that put on a dress or put on pants just like I do. To tell me what to do. Because I'm grown. I can study the word of God for myself. I can hear God for myself. I know God for myself. The Lord speaks to me. The Lord uses me. So I don't need nobody telling me what to do. And that's the attitude. And because that's the attitude that people oftentimes take on. When we as leaders approach them. They are already sitting back like. Mm, mm, who they think they are. So the least bit of authority that we show. The least bit of. Uh, even sometimes we have to get stern. Yeah, I don't see that side of me often, but ask anybody that has ever been a part of my ministry. Mm-hmm. Yes, honey. And so because of that, you know, they may reject you. Now, the flip side of that is um, they may not respect you at all. Um, in other words, hey, girl, are you a pastor? How you doing, girl? How you ain't, girlfriend? And you're an apostle. And it's like, no, I'm trying to give you a word from God. I'm not exactly your girlfriend right now. Okay? Even if we are friends. Maybe we grew up together. Maybe we're family members. Maybe we're classmates. But when I'm standing before you as an instrument of God, as a mouthpiece of the Lord, I'm not your sister girl. I'm not your homie. not your friend. not your ace boom coon. I, you know, I'm, I'm the woman of God or the man of God, you know, for my brother's. Who's standing there as a spiritual authority to speak from the mouth of God through through my mouth to you. That's an important job. That's a weighty responsibility. Not only those who have preached this gospel, who have given their lives for it, or who have had family members really close to you and you've seen what they've gone through, really know what a sacrifice that is to even do that. Now, I've been doing this since I was 14 years old. Since I was 14 years old, I gave up my childhood 
to preach this gospel. My teenage years to preach this gospel. In college, did I go to the frat parties? No. Why? Because I was preaching this gospel. And so, you know, I deserve a little bit more than, hey, girl. Am I saying you got to lift me up as the high, grand, exalted, grand pumpa, the queen of uh, the universe? No. But just give it a little respect? Come on here. That should be the least that we should do. We should esteem one another in the body of Christ. And say, you know what? You're a woman of God. And I respect what you do. And I want to thank you for all the sacrifices that you have made in order to be used by God. So the question was asked, how do you keep that balance? How can you come on and talk about makeup and eyelashes and flowers and still come on and um, talk about spiritual matters and still have a level of respect? Honestly, woman of God, I'm going to tell you this. Sometimes, and some of y'all not going to like this, it's the truth. Sometimes you just have to put people in their place. Do it with love. Do it with grace. Do it with patience. Do it with kindness. But sometimes you got to just put people in their place. What do I mean? Prime example is this. I am walking into this church. I'm fully vested. I've got my clergy uh, collar on. I'm ready to go preach the gospel. Here it is. This is a minister in the church. Now I'm an apostle. Which means I'm a senior leader. I'm a minister of ministers. Okay I'm, okay, I'm an overseer of churches. Okay. Been a whole bunch of years since I've been minister. Yes, I'm a minister, but I'm an apostle. Okay. I'm walking in. Hey, how you doing, boo? Boo? So I'm an apostle, but I'm boo. Now, if it was a man, you would have never called a man boo, number one. Which means you have already disrespected me. Then you don't understand my office. I'm going to pop. Would you, if a judge walk in the courtroom, whether or not you believe that they deserve to be a judge, whether or not you believe they deserve to be called your honor, or not, you're going to call that man your honor. You're going to call him sir or ma'am. You're going to call her, her honor, your honor. You're going to give some respect because that person has the ability to decide your future. If we can do that for the world, why we can't do that for the saints of God? Anyway, I digress. And I just had to say, excuse me? Oh, oh, I, I apologize. <laughs> uh, I'm so, a woman of God, you know. I'm like, Lord, when they gonna get it? When they gonna get it? I've been doing this all my life, pretty much. Half of, more than half of my life. They still don't get it. I'm not their boo, not their baby. Nah, you know. Woman of God, I'm gonna tell you. Man of God, I'm gonna tell you. Sometimes you gotta put people in their place. Okay? You gotta just let them know. I am not your, your your friend. I am the woman of God. Okay? And you, sometimes people are going to get the wrong impression. They're going to think you're arrogant. You think you're gonna, they're going to think that you think you're better than everyone. That you're stuck up. So be it. But do not allow the people of God to disrespect who you are in the Lord. Okay? Because in disrespecting you, they're also disrespecting the God that called you. We don't want to do that. So I, that's how I maintain that balance. Now this video gonna be lengthy because I, it, it takes a while, okay, for me to just share with you. You asked me to share with you my personal experiences. Uh, growing up as a young minister, as a young evangelist, I had to learn how to command respect. I did, which meant at the age of fourteen when God called me, you know, I had to realize that my friends were gonna be fair for you. If any, I went through a lot of lonely nights, a lot of lonely days when everybody was going out, meeting at the mall. I was at home because I realized that a life of ministry required separation. I learned that lesson early on. And in my separation process, you know, um, I realized if I am with them, when they're cussing and fussing and doing stuff, when it's time for me to preach, they're not going to want to hear anything I have to say. So it caused me to be really isolated. And that's not just for when you first start out in ministry. That's something that happened. What am I doing? I'm sitting in here talking to you guys on camera. When most people my age are getting ready to go to the club. You understand what I'm saying? I have no desire to go to the club. I thank the Lord. I've never been to one and I don't have the desire to go. Okay. But what I'm saying is it's a, it's a life of sacrifice. 
and you have to, it's a life of separation. Okay, it's just a reminder because I know I'm talking to people that know that most likely. Okay, also, I had to learn the balance of who to share what with. Everybody don't need to know your secrets. Everybody doesn't need to know, you know, who you are outside of the pulpit. Everybody does not need to know, you know, your secrets or your the things that are close to your heart. My inner circle is very small. My friends are few, but my inner circle is even fewer. There are only a couple of people, maybe one, two, or three people that I would really talk to concerning the personal matters of my life. Those are people that God has trusted. Uh, God has let me know I can trust them. People that have been proven over the process of time to be trustworthy. Who not only understand what I go through because I'm telling them, but who understand what I'm going through because they go through it too. In other words, there are other ministers. There are other people of God who walk. Not all of them are apostles, but they are mature in God to understand. Okay? They respect me as an apostle in a pulpit, but on the phone is sister or brother. And I'm, I'm grateful to God that he's blessed me with those type of people that are in my life. And they are very trustworthy people. We confide in one another. Okay? You have to just trust God with those type of relationships. And also, not just to talk to them, but trust God with the relationship. Those are people that I'm going bowling with. That's, those are people that I'm going to go to the movies with. Because I know they're not going to compromise. I know I can let my hair down, so to say. And they won't uh, think any differently of me when I stand before them on a Sunday to preach. Okay? I don't go out with my uh, congregation or the people that I'm pastoring for that reason. Because there has to be a level of respect. I made the mistake early on pastoring. I made the mistake of uh, going out to the movies with one of my uh, church members. And in the movie, we were, we were both laughing. And she said, girl, you so stupid. <laughs> and I said, girl, you so stupid. No. And, I'm, and, and I never watched another movie with that uh, particular church member. And she was a minister. But for that split moment, she really forgot that you're talking to your pastor. You ain't just talking to your girlfriend. So I had to cut that out. And I wanted to go to the movies. But I realized that she could not handle the dynamics of that type of relationship. So I had to cut that personal part off and wean myself from that personal part and be her pastor. Simple as that. Amen. This is a decision. Tough decision, but it's one that's needed. Cannot be common with the people of God because commonality breeds content. You become common with them. They'll, they will become common with you. When it comes time for you to make a decision, they go. They will question. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, because, see, you too common. You too, no, I'm your pastor. I'm your pastor. So there you go, woman of God. And it requires sacrifice. But that's how I've kind of maintained the balance. I don't deprive myself. You know, one of my favorite things to say is enjoying Jesus and all his joys. I don't deprive myself of fun and entertainment. I'm very selective of who I share those things with. I, try, I keep it in my family. Because see, to my family, I'm not the apostle to my family. To my family, I'm Stacy. Okay? But when it comes down for me to preach, then there we go. I'm apostle. Let's go. Let's handle business. So, it is a delicate balance. I'm praying for you guys. Uh, and guess what? I don't always get it right. Sometimes I misjudge the dynamics of a relationship. But I have to quickly make that adjustment when I find out that it's gotten out of hand. And you can still speak with authority and still be relatable to the people. Okay? So, I do pray that uh, I've answered your question. If there are any further questions... If I miss one of the questions, please ask me again, okay? Please write me another email and ask because I really want this to be a blessing to you. And I've enjoyed this talk with you, okay? So remember to enjoy Jesus and all his joys. And thank you for making ministry possible, okay?